Often called the city where artists come to dream, Kolkata has always been at the center of almost every cultural revolution the country has seen. From reformists like Raja Ram Mohan Roy to Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore to the maverick filmmaker Satyajit Ray, the city has produced thought leaders across generations and spectrums, making Kolkata a landmine of art, culture, theatre and the intellect. You know, it is a cliche, but Calcutta made me an artist. I've made Kolkata my home and it's absolutely fantastic to be here. I've been coming to Kolkata for the last 40 years. People like Vikram Seth, Geeta Mehta, Amitabh Ghosh, I mean, we've had literary greats who've grown up in, in Calcutta. CNBC TV 18 presents Speaking Volumes at the APJ Kolkata Literary Fest, a two-part series on some of the finest artists of today and their views on film, literature and art. The fourth APJ Kolkata Literary Festival, organized by the APJ Surindra Group and Oxford Bookstores, brought together artists, writers, filmmakers and thought leaders from all walks of life in a winter of rich debate, entertainment and inspiration. For me, what's exciting is to see how the program has evolved, um, the kind of uh, writers, the kind of uh, things that they're writing about, um, also the audience has evolved. Um, I see um, from, the, from the days when we first started in Calcutta, it was sort of the same literary crowd that was attending all the events and now you see um, it's split into different interest groups. Over 70 speakers in five days at some of the most iconic landmarks in the city, such as the Victoria Memorial, the National Library, St. George's Church and of course the Oxford Bookstore saw the city lose itself in thought, discussion and a mini renaissance of sorts. So first the S title has to come into my head and then the book rolls off after that. There is a war about to start. The Shah of Iran wants to recapture Herat on the Afghan border. Many, many people are writing today and that not only does that writing need recognition but it needs mentoring and it needs assistance on its way into the world of publishing. In a sea of festivals across the country, there are several reasons why AKLF stands out. But it is also perhaps the only literary festival that started out this year with a tribute to 100 years of cinema. It's 100 years of Indian cinema, right? I mean, we went to Marrakesh for the launch of my sister and brother-in-law's hotel and uh, the Marrakesh Film Festival, which is a very big festival, they were celebrating 100 years of Indian cinema. And because of that, they actually got 100 Indian film stars to come, 100 plus Indian film personalities to come for the, uh, for the show, which is just about last month. So I think in India, it's not being celebrated in such a big way, but it deserves to be. Just as literature and the written word was a very important uh, moment a few hundred years ago when you could actually, you know, print books and spread um, the written word through books. Um, cinema is, is, is one of the most important mediums um, of our age. Um, Indian cinema has also changed a lot and you're seeing um, a lot of new stories being told and stories that, that people can connect with and are stories about things that are happening to people and help us to understand better um, what we are as, as people and how our country is changing and what is the future and I think there are a lot of new stories being told and I think that's interesting. A display of rare movie posters. It's a fantastic collection and in connection with uh, 100 uh, years of film in India uh, so naturally it's very appropriate and uh, how technically uh, uh, now we have developed with science and technology but those days 
when there was no other way everybody used to uh, paint on stone because uh, there was a lithography and uh, it, which the poster which we are we used to see with three four colors all by you know uh, hand painted uh, a stone it just takes you back in time immediate rewind it is and it's so beautiful fast rewind that too i think it's really brilliant and as i said it's a memory jogger nothing works like bollywood and i think everywhere even the bombay one was i mean you know we had separate days especially for bollywood and um, why not i think we need to celebrate 100 years of cinema and all the work that's gone behind the 100 years so it's great to say babu ji dheere chalna <laughs> a glimpse into india's indie film culture what kind of independence are we talking about you know what kind of films are we talking about the biggest problem that we all of us face today is how to find an audience how to reach out to an audience how to get them to know that we exist if we can't change the process of filmmaking we can't be independent filmmakers if you are abiding by the rules of the the guild rules the camera rules the technician rules and everything then your process become affected and you slowly trying to make films which actually kind of not it's kind of uh, you know something out of the mill slowly a space was created where anybody wants to watch a theater go to academy it became a fad a grand inauguration at the o inspiring victoria memorial if a non literate can make a suggestion at a glittering presence of such eminent intellectuals i think literary literary festivals must showcase the outstanding writings found in various indian languages and thus demonstrate the linguistic diversity of our country and the legendary sham benegal providing an insight into the indian film industry a magnum opus in itself cinema came to india in 1896 and the first screening of a film that lumiere brothers had made at watson's hotel in bombay no one would have predicted that in just about you know from then to now of course it would be 115 years or so 16 years that cinema would become as big as it has in india and adding magic at the victoria memorial was the revival of the dying art of patachitra A Patta Chitra scroll created by Guru Pada Chitrakar was unveiled as the artist sang the tale of APJ Kolkata Lit Fest. APJ Kolkata Lit Fest it was a culture cauldron with artists writers filmmakers and literati all mixing with ease to discuss everything synonymous with culture and kolkata as a city kolkata has often been the inspiration for some of the finest films made in this country some of them bold experiments for their time and very fittingly a hundred years of indian cinema found a special place at the APJ Kolkata Lit Fest i sort of honed in to the heartbeat of Hollywood cinema of the time because for some reason I felt that it was far more credible than the other two kinds of cinema. In recent years in the multiplex culture we've seen the blurring of the further blurring of the line between a mainstream film and a parallel film. Veteran filmmaker Sham Benegal, veteran actor Dhritiman Chatterjee and filmmaker Onir came together to discuss how the new in Indian films needs to be addressed. 
good cinema is not a make believe world it's a it's a real world that addresses real issues even if it's in a fantastic space people like anurag and someone who had pretty tough time to come when they came into the business are uh, a power for the good cultural sensibilities are now urban uh, what are called westernized but i don't see them necessarily as negative uh, trends Long considered one of India's finest filmmakers, credited with paving the way for a new alternate cinema in the 70s. Legendary filmmaker Sham Benegal says the current generation of film directors who are trying to find a balance offer new hope. Anurag Kashyap he is doing it very well. He is making use of um, what the commercial you know the commercial possibilities and the kind of resources that are available. by making use of them in his own rather unique way without compromising similarly you have other people who are doing it elsewhere also the look at vishal bhardwaj now people like that they're doing very interesting work and because of them a lot of young people have now come out you know who wouldn't have had the opportunities and there's a lot of talent spotting going on at this moment <laughs> For veteran actor Dhritiman Chatterjee, associated with movies such as Pratidwandi and 36 Chauringi Lane, sees the change in the Indian film landscape as a new generation enforcing a new set of cultural norms. The new kind of social consciousness and what we now call parallel cinema came into the reckoning uh, since the mid 1950s, and we had the emergence of what we now, in retrospect, call the parallel cinema, as opposed to the mainstream or commercial cinema. this carried on till about the 80s when bangla cinema went into a kind of decline but it has to be said that in the last let us say last decade it has been resurgent um, again with new directors doing new kinds of work interesting kind of work and the most heartening thing is that audiences particularly young audiences are coming back to the cinema arts New age independent filmmaker Onir while remaining optimistic about the future of the Indian film expressed concern over not enough being done to encourage those who want to think differently. The society changes where everything is defined by money the value of money and that is when I feel uh, the way people look at things start changing today whenever you're talking of something new because I think filmmakers um storytellers are supposed to be not people who follow the trend you know you're not there to feed the audience what they want to have what they're already what they already know you as a filmmaker as a storyteller uh, you're supposed to be visionary you know you're supposed to be able to create a trend you're supposed to be a change maker and unfortunately in uh, india most parts of india today you have the merit of a cinema you know being calculated by what it earns the first three days you know if we look at that that some of the finest of indian films be it gurudat be it riti ghatak would never have existed we would never have got its due a hundred glorious years one of the biggest and most diverse film industries in the world and naming a favorite may not be that easy really difficult like i really can't say that i would have to say rai zoranuddin rathri uh buri allen's manhattan i think ray's first film potter panchali is still my favorite gangs of vasipur was a wonderful film like uh, you know double thumbs up to that that is often referred to as the intellectual capital the apj kolkata lit fest saw a literary confluence with each affair more thought provoking than the other ghalib says to monto he says can you possibly hear me across this enormous distance monto bhai <laughs> your obstinacy has forced me to speak again after all these years it is true 
It is true that I lived another 12 years after 1857, but I did not care to talk to anyone. But still, I had to speak for selling words was my livelihood. But other than that, what was absolutely necessary to earn a living, speech had become haram to me. It was profane. And he goes on and on like this. Dozak Nama or Conversations in Hell a fictitious dialogue between literary giants Khalid and Sadat Hassan Manto, written in Bengali and translated into English, opened up the doors of history through a modern tale. A dramatized reading of Dozak Nama saw veteran actors Barun Chandra and Tom Alter take stage, leaving the audience mesmerized. <laughs> মানটোর কাছে শোনো আসি কাবার দিকে তাকে চোখ মারে মানে বলো তাড়াতাড়ি করে ভালো সালা ক্যাপ্টেনের আসনায়ের ঝাড়ে মাস যাও আসি ছিল সবার পেছনে রাখতে ওস্তাদ আই ওয়াজ রটিং অ্যাওয়ে এট দ্য টাইম আই কুড স্মেল ইট ইভেন ইফ নো ওয়ান এলস কুড দ্য স্টেনচ অফ পিউট্রিফিকেশন one evening unable to bear the spell anymore i visited the mahal sarai begum was telling them hasrat had many wives but nabi did not neglect any of them he used to take turns with each <laughs> he used to take turns with each rotten flesh ya allah with a shriek she put her arms around me rubbing my back with both her hands she said What's the matter with you, Mirza Saab? What's wrong? Have you had too much to drink? Did you have a bad dream? <laughs> I began to laugh. Barun Chanda, a writer and an actor par excellence, believes that while lit fests are important, a lot more needs to be done to infuse the culture of appreciating art. The life was a romance. And when I was in the hotel, I was going to the hotel, and I was going to the hotel. And the story is there is to narrate, and that was life, not the life outside. The life of outside was full of poverty, full of disease, full of death, full of everything else. But they lived a romance in life, which was to be literature. And then it comes, you know, what they used to write. The multifaceted Tom Alter believes Indian cinema and literature have come a long way in breaking stereotypes and redefining roles. You can say about the modern generation that in the last 10 years, we have broken every possible so-called stereotype of Hindi cinema. And now the subjects, the format, the music, the acting has totally changed. And you take any, you, say, you can say the revolution started with Lagan, which was around 2000. That film is, it broke every single stereotype that you can imagine. I mean, imagine in a village, instead of having a thakur against the poor man, you had a, a cricket match between the English and the, and the Indians. This is mind-blowing. But in the last 10 years, subjects, as I said, uh, style of acting has changed immensely in the last 10 years. Music has become unrecognizable. So we've broken so many stereotypes. A festival for art aficionados at a city that loves art, making the APJ Kolkata Literary Festival a platform to discuss, criticize, appreciate and commemorate all that is art. Actually, I was attending Sham Benegal's uh, 100 Years of Cinema talk the other day. I mean, this can take a long time. Then if you talk about the current uh, setup in um, cinema, it's absolutely, I mean, I love it. I heard about festival, uh, which uh, go in these days. So I hope to see some events uh, with the writers and uh, uh, people from uh, publish industry. I think it's very well organized. Join us next time for the concluding part of Speaking Volumes. Listen to some of the most prolific writers, historians and artists talk about some of the most burning topics of our time. We leave you with a performance by the National Academy of Performing Arts of Karachi. A rendition from their play Manto or Khalib, Ek Guftagu.
Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Movies have immortalized this city quite often dubbed the intellectual capital, the birthplace of modern literary and artistic thought. Kolkata offers its visitors and lovers charm and intellect. It has always been a city where um, the written word, um, thinking, thinking people, thoughts, creativity, painting, music, the arts have been celebrated in the best possible way. In part one of the series on the Kolkata Literary Festival, we saw the changing cinema scope of Indian cinema, the fast evolving face of theatre and art and all that embodies the beautiful city of Kolkata. Who could take all this at our age, Manto Bhai? What use are tears? I don't care for them anymore. In this episode, you'll witness the literary side of the city. What makes Kolkata tick as a cultural hub and is it still correct to label it India's intellectual capital? Organized by the APJ Surindra Group and the Oxford Bookstore, the 4th APJ Kolkata Literary Festival spanning over five days brought together writers, filmmakers, artists and thought leaders from all across the arena. The five days of literature and art in the rich Kolkata winter saw the city immerse itself in art, literature, culture and heritage. It just for me symbolized uh, how um, a literary fest can get it right by getting the perspectives right from the word go. Here it was uh, focused, it was serious, it was apt. I'm really enjoying the, the literature festival. I think that Jaipur is the famous one, but I've been really impressed by the different kinds of discussions we've had. So we haven't just talked about literature, we've also talked about film, art, different cultural contexts and with a very high level of contributions. Literature festivals are excellent. You know, it brings together writers, you know, cartoonists, you know, dramatists uh, to speak about you know, what's happening in a country, in a society in a fairly large and, and diverse way. You know, obviously sometimes politics is a bit too narrow and here the, the larger picture, the aspirations of the people can be expressed. Pathi Chitra is one of the earliest forms of popular art and exists even today. Paths or scroll paintings are narrative stories based on religious or moral themes for the entertainment of the village folk. Adding local flavour to the literary fest was Pathi Chitra artist Guru Pada Chitrakar who displayed his take on the fest. Actually, I am going to be a little bit of 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 a little Prakriti Durjog niye, Walter Center je bhanga hoye chilo. Seta niye kore chhi. Shuna mere bhuva. Ami ekta kono, amar chokhe samne jodi kichhe ekta khub bhalo yaashe, seta kami niye moto kore banai. Choto chine mere rasto, dukane aashi toyo na baashi, hoye ko udhato. Oh, 
picture of feminism with a, with a, a knife in the, you know, in the teeth. Has the ruling class changed? Not at all. The elements are still there. कमला दास शशि देश पांडे अनीता देसाई डिस्पाइट सच इलास्ट्रियस नेम्स इन द लिटरेरी अरीना वुमेन राइटर्स इन इंडिया आर ऑफ्टन अंडर वैल्यूड ऑफ्टन बिकॉज ऑफ पेट्रियाकल एजाम्पन द टाइम एन इसमत चुकताई रोट एंड द टाइम एन कमला दास वॉज राइटिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल तस्लीम आई वुड इवन काउंट इन द सेम कैटेगरी एट ऑल Uh, uh they were saying something which was deeply personal it was more a personal voice it was a personal cry for freedom and then of course it had echoes which touched the lives of thousands of women and men i hope gender has been addressed uh, unevenly uh, both in indian literature and in indian cinema which has so much affected our consciousness so sometimes we have the strong aggressive woman who's uh, killing her rapist like in insaf ka tarazu and at other times we'll have the demure bahu who is doing being puja and looking after her husband and her family and her in-laws as the role model but uh, in terms of a normal woman who has feelings who's an individual who's not a mother a girlfriend a daughter uh, there is less and less spaces and those spaces seem to be shrinking and becoming more conservative Set in the beautiful landscape of the National Library at Kolkata, a power-packed discussion led by French writer Kenise Murad brought out issues faced by Asian women in expressing emotions, identity, and creativity, and its subsequent consequence in their writing. A journalist reporting on the war reporter and journalist in all the. I can see when I'm looking at the class. I see the boys kind of, you know, you see that little bug going off. It isn't surprising when Kenise Murad, a celebrated French Turkish writer with Indian roots, attributes her writing and stories to her background and her life. Taking advantage of her fascinating lineage, she believes her writing can act as a confluence between the West and the East. Writing first as a journalist for 15 years, then I became a writing writing historical novel mostly. because i wanted to convey a few things that i believed in it was the ideas of more well, tolerance between different culture different religion and to explain to the west what they did not understand about the east so i'm trying i'm a little link i'm trying to be a little link between these two worlds who don't don't know each other well or have prejudice especially of course towards the muslim world but towards the oriental world often also and so i wanted to try to to fight these prejudices which uh, are leading to violence and to wars you know one cannot uh, wars are always prepared by propaganda which shows the other as evil and all violence also are prepared by this propaganda if you see those as evil of course you want to destroy him if you see that he is like you you are not going to go and fight him a sex trafficking abolitionist Journalist and an activist, Ruchira Gupta has worked endlessly for over 25 years to put a curb on sex trafficking and prostitution in the country. Ruchira feels that society has a great influence over media and literature, and literature merely mirrors the reality of the civilized and the uncivilized state we live in. It's it's a function of society influencing media. so society influencing books and movies and tv so uh, because uh, society itself is becoming more conservative so we are you know what tv is depicting is that more conservative society that is one thing but it's also of course the other way around the tv influences us or right books influence us or cinema influences us but we also influence books uh, cinema and tv so i think it's like a catch 22 we've sort of gone into 
and uh, many women and girls uh, have begun to feel it's safer to stick to the old conservative values uh, because they have seen a whole generation of women post independence who are single who are independent uh, who had fantastic jobs as uh, heads of departments in universities as writers as lawyers as activists and uh, but they did not have um, you know the fun of family life as they see it so there has been the daughters have wanted it all they wanted the family life they wanted husbands and children and all of that along with the independence but they haven't been able to negotiate that so what has happened is actually they've just got the family life with all its limitations without having the independence uh, to be able to negotiate and fulfill their full potential themselves and uh, i think media is depicting that and influencing that a critic broadcaster and writer bidisha talked about stereotypes and breaking them I'm extremely disturbed at western audiences expectations of asian and particularly indian subcontinental artwork because I suspect that those audiences like the work which um somehow comforts their stereotypes so they like they like films and books about oppressed women and uh the fight between hindus and muslims and they like they like fairy tales like slumdog millionaire and they like to hear about children living under railway tracks and all i would say is that at least there's a movement on the behalf of second generation british asians which is i am one of to try to counteract those kinds of clichés because we too find it extremely limiting you know it's always about forbidden love it's always about class or poverty and we're we're trying very hard to get away from those ideas because they're stereotypes Shobha De, one of India's eccentric women writers, choosing the platform to launch her latest book, Seth Ji, talks about women writers, emancipation, and the right to voice. We need to look at a lot of things, and right now there is a heightened uh, awareness, especially amongst the women of India, who, after centuries, have found a voice. Now, this is a voice. If we stifle it at this stage. will be doing not just a grave injustice to the women of our country but to humanity it's not just about sexuality you know unfortunately we are confusing issues we think emancipation means uh, you can turn into uh, a sexual predator and that's what emancipation is all about it is not that it's about uh, just your basic human rights it's about your dignity it's about uh, opportunities it's about choices and somewhere yes we are losing the plot and we are only equating uh, a certain kind of freedom and emancipation with sexual freedom that's not how it is in order to encourage emerging unrecognized talent of south asian origin tibor jones and associates in the second year of the prize welcomed entries of manuscripts of unpublished draft of a full length novel With over a hundred entries, the panel was baffled with the response they received, and choosing the winner was a tough choice. His standard suggestion was lots of sleep and exercise. For that reason, everyone in the ashram thought of him as an excellent doctor. I stared at my mother's naked back and ran a comforting hand over it. The winner of the 2013 Tibor Jones South Asia was Avni Doshi for her manuscript Girl in White Cotton. The prize includes rupees 1 lakh and literary representation by Tibor Jones and Associates, a leading London literary agency. Actually, I started writing a poem and I just it just kept growing there were just more words and it soon became a short story and then it turned into a novel but uh i think i was inspired a lot by my mom's childhood growing up in pune by a lot of my mom's family living in india and um there were just a lot of stories i wanted to tell in those we were looking for the things that one normally looks at uh that is how well written it was what the storyline was what the plot and characterization was what kind of potential it had as an unusual story and what kind of courage the writer had to write something different there's no one particular thing because every book has different strengths and and weaknesses but essentially you're looking for uh, a good storyteller writers are eventually storytellers and to tell a story well you have to know the world of that story you have to be confident within that world um so how well does the writer 
create that world. A man's intellect is a testament to his thirst for knowledge, and books, big or small, are the biggest treasure trove of information. I have been reading uh, from Dongri to Dubai uh, by Hussein Zaidi. It's a history of the Mumbai Mafia. It's a non-fiction book. And it's beautifully uh, researched and some great stories in it. A novel that we published called The Song Seekers by, oddly enough, a Bengali writer uh, called Shashwati Sen Gupta. A very interesting historical biography of Elizabeth I. Reading a book recently, which I found very important that everybody should read, especially you know the young people. It's a book written by a Lebanese writer who lives in France. It's called Amin Malouf. It's been on my shelves for a long while, which is Louis Bunuel's uh, biography called My Last Breath. There is a war about to start. The Shah of Iran wants to recapture Herat. A fact that needs to be rediscovered in the context of a talk that tries to argue that Gandhi was an Asian, not just an Indian. Kolkata, rich in heritage and history, has always been a fascination for historians. Several artists, writers and filmmakers have often tried to capture their city in their works. But no one coming close to depicting the wild child that the city truly is. There is a war about to start. The Shah of Iran wants to recapture Herat on the Afghan border. As a result, the officer has been able to change, hasn't been able to change his horse at any point in the journey. And so for five days and for five nights, he's been riding the same mount. And this night, in the dark, without a moon, he gets lost. William Dalrymple's perceptive account of the first British invasion of Afghanistan in his latest book, Return of a King, mirroring the invasion a century and a half later, is a lesson in history and the need to learn from it. I think the Indian biographical tradition is still in its infancy. You're not getting these great tomb-stopping four-volume uh, biographies of, um, of major political figures here it, coming out regularly in the way you do in America and Britain. I mean, they're beginning. Ram Guha himself is working on a, on a two-volume history of Gandhi. There is a, a volume on Nehru being prepared by Sunil Kilnani. Ananya Vajpayee has, has just begun work on uh, Ambedkar. But uh, in, it, it's true to say that at the moment there isn't the same, the bestseller list certainly and the prize list are not full of works of history and biography in a way they should be. I think India is in the grip of a, uh, of a literary renaissance. It, the, the, the field is changing, there's no doubt. The extraordinary generation of Amitav Ghosh, Salman Rushdie, Vikram Set, who are now in their 50s, have not had successors of the same stature, I think it's fair to say in this country, that the current crop of younger writers aren't yet in their stride in the same way. I mean, where you're getting extraordinary fiction is in Pakistan. And I think, you know, Mohsen Hamid, Daniel Moinuddin, those two are an A-team of the same stature as Rushdie, Ghosh and Set. Setting in context, history and politics in the modern time was Ramachandra Guha with his take on what kind of an Asian was Gandhi. Among Gandhians and Gandhi scholars, this is very well known. The significance of 9 September 1906 as being uh, marked as the birth of Satyagraha, it's extremely well known. But I want to, what I want to focus on now is on one aspect of that meeting in the Empire Theatre that has been forgotten. A fact that needs to be rediscovered in the context of a talk that tries to argue that Gandhi was an Asian, not just an Indian. And this is that in that crowd in the Transvaal Theatre were very many Chinese. For the Asiatic Act of the Transvaal government discriminated against the Chinese too. It was not an Indian Act, it was an Asiatic Act. Another of Gandhi's very close friends, a Jewish radical called Henry Pollack, said that this Satyagraha shows that the 15,000 Asiatics in the Transvaal 
are fighting a race fight which is of the utmost importance for the whole world. And this struggle is whether the Asiatic people were eternally to be kept in subjection or treated on terms of equality. Whether the Asiatic people were to be regarded as fellow men, as fellow human beings, to be treated as men to men and not as men to slaves. Five days, 70 speakers and a city that simply loves its art, culture and books. The festival was a confluence of mind, matter, music, film, theatre and art. The fourth edition of the APJ Kolkata Literary Festival saw artists, writers, filmmakers and thought leaders from all walks of life come together and celebrate the spirit of a city that has long been the art capital of the country.